Hi, greetings and salutations. Last week I uh, tried to do some cooling mods on my Jeep Cherokee XJ, my 98 XJ, and failed miserably. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about and haven't, and maybe you're new here, welcome by the way. But if, if you're uh, unfamiliar with my 98 Jeep XJ, there it is. Uh, it's a little bit sunbaked and a little bit weather bare, but she's mine and I like it. But just a quick recap, I've been experiencing uh, overheating issues at trail speed. No, no issues at all at highway speed, just at slow speed where I'm not getting the flow across the radiator. I'm not going to say I'm a procrastinator, but it's been happening for the last seven or eight months. Actually, it's been happening since about November when the electric fan that was in that XJ fell apart. I mean, literally just fell to pieces. So instead of going out and, and buying a new e-fan and buying a, a fan shroud, which probably would have been the prudent thing to do, I decided to go hit my parts board and grab an electric fan from a Ford Taurus that I bought God knows when for the for a uh, supplemental fan for the um, Suburban. I installed that, went out the field, test it, and it failed. Well, I came back home and I swapped out the electric fan for the original mechanical fan while running the old style electric fan. And it did a little bit better, but it failed. So I decided that here's a good opportunity to make a video just to find out just how good the stock uh, system is. So I went and I bought... A new fan shroud. <gasps> I gotta stop and find that, man. My knife. And a new 10 blade electric fan, direct replacement. Oh, and this one comes with the little spring clips. Awesome. I'm gonna have to go try to find those at the pick part. So these are direct bolt ins from the, uh, for the factory parts and they're probably built to factory spec, I'm hoping anyway. This one, this electric fan costs about 50 bucks. And this came in under $20, so for about 70 bucks shipped, you can replace this stuff. And there's a reason why this is on your vehicle, and that's because the fan... Well, you can see it here. The shroud is integral to this piece, but the shroud needs to be here for the fan to work effectively to draw air through the radiator otherwise it'd be drawing air from inside the engine compartment and it wouldn't be drawing enough air through the radiator to keep the car cool so i'm going to put these in tonight and then tomorrow i'm going to run back up carpenter canyon road uh, from the same starting point and i'm going to go up to that shooting area which is about three miles from the main road and see if it gets there without overheating and and then uh, we'll see what the water temperature is on the gauge when we get there and then uh, once that test is complete and then we'll uh, we'll run down to the part store pick up some water wetter and uh, put some water wetter in the cooling system get that integrated into cooling we'll run the test again and see if there's any improvement and from there the next step would be to put spacers on the hinges between the hinge and the hood to lift the back of the hood up, in effect creating a cowl induction hood that at slow speeds will allow the heated air inside the engine compartment to escape out the back of the hood and at highway speeds it would because as the as the air comes over the the hood and hits the windshield there's a vortex and some of that air gets redirected down into the engine compartment and pushes the heat out the bottom of the truck. <clears throat> and then finally after that's done uh, we'll see if that helps lower the uh, the coolant temperature any and if once that's done then I'll, I'll make some uh, hood vents 
and put some hood vents in this thing and see if that helps even more. So right now I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff in and then tomorrow we'll head up the mountain. Sound good? Let's get busy. Later. Today I'm going to run that cooling system test for the third time to see whether or not the uh, factory mechanical fan with the fan shroud and the um, uh, factory replacement electric fan are going to be capable enough to keep this thing cool running up this hill with the air conditioning on uh the conditions are about the same let's check the weather hey siri what's the current temperature at my location it's currently 70 degrees awesome same temperature about the same time of day it's straight around two o'clock in the afternoon with the coolant temperature at 210 degrees at at the beginning in fact let me start this thing up if it'll start and uh, turn the air on I'll leave that fan off for a minute and let it let it I want I want to build that temperature to 210 and start this test at 210 because that's about where it was at before and uh, man the air conditioning works great in this truck it'll feel you can hang beef in here but I want to I want to see if it'll make it all the way up without overheating today. I don't think it's going to get any warmer than that. So uh, let me turn on the electric fan. And we'll get the show on the road. didn't get any hotter than 210 degrees and I'm sitting here idling and I'm watching the temperature drop what did we learn from this little experiment don't modify your vehicle unless you have to look if I was running a stroker kit 
in this thing and um, uh, maybe a turbocharger or something like that or I had I was running 37s on a six inch lift with you know off-road bumpers you know heavy bumpers with a spare terror rack on the back and a safari rack on the top if I added 1500 pounds to this vehicle and I was asking it to do much more than it was ever designed to do then I might when I you know stick some stick some cabbage into a cooling system upgrade with a, a larger radiator and maybe some uh, you know the electric fan upgrade but just removing the factory fan and sticking a comparably sized electric fan on this thing is not going to improve um, low speed air volume coming through the the radiator in fact probably the most important thing you could do to make sure that your cooling system is functioning properly is to make sure the fan shroud is installed and if it breaks replace it realistically i should probably run this test again take the fan shroud off and run it again and see if it overheats i'm willing to bet it will so like everything under this hood out here especially in the desert Everything under this hood after 20 plus years is going to be as brittle as brittle can be. This didn't escape the ravages of time and heat. And all that happened is this, the top piece of the shroud busted off. And, uh, you know, this part right here is probably more important to keep your, your digits out of the way. But realistically, this fan needs the shroud to direct air through the radiator. If this piece isn't here, then it's sucking in air from around the radiator and it's not getting enough flow through the radiator. This electric fan runs almost all the time when the air conditioning's on. And the way I have this set up right now is that it's I have it hooked up to a switch so that I can turn it on and off. But uh, this thing runs, um, if I got the toggle switch on, it runs with the with key on. So it's always um, available when the, the key is in the run position. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, uh, a I'm going to get some water wetter, and what that is is it's a cooling system additive. So you put that in your radiator, and it's supposed to make the water cool better. I don't know through chemistry. Um, I think I can get um, a 12 ounce bottle of that for around ten dollars, and I want to try it and see if see if the temperatures come down uh, even more if they do great it's a great ten dollar investment so i want to look into what the actual under hood temperature is on a day like today um so i need to to put a thermometer or some kind of temperature sensor inside the inch compartment i might put it right over here someplace if i can find something and I want to monitor the under hood air temperatures, but I want to see if I can reduce the under hood temperatures. That will go a long way to keep the cooling temperatures, the coolant temperatures low, because you got to remember that uh, if you can't get the heat out of the engine compartment, you're heat soaking everything in here with the radiator because the air comes through the radiator and into the engine. You want to be able to get that heat out. So one, the other, the other modification to lower the under hood temperatures is to place a one inch block between this hinge and the hood, and that will raise the hood off the cowl. And at low temperatures, it'll allow the air to flow out that gap. And at high temperatures, uh, as the air is flowing over the hood hits the windshield and a portion of that will come back into the hood creating like a, uh, a cowl induction hood and then finally the last thing I want to do is cut holes in the sheet metal and put uh, hood vents in the sheet metal to help evacuate the heat and using some kind of thermometer or temperature sensor underneath the hood well that will tell me whether or not uh, it's actually working and whether or not it's worth the money I think the hood vents look cool so we'll try that. But as far as the cooling system uh, is concerned, if you're running a Jeep like mine with just a little bit of a lift, I got a three inch lift and I'm running slightly larger tires. I'm running, what are these, two 65s? 
Oh, no, 235, 70, 16. So they're, um, I think, I think they're 30 and a half inches. They're not even 31s. So I'm not even at the point where I need to re-gear. So like 30 and a half inch tires and a three inch lift kit on a stock vehicle. Uh, all you need to really need to do is make sure that your fan shroud is intact and your electric cooling fan is working. And that should suffice. Um, if you're, if your radiator's a little bit older, maybe you want to consider doing a flush and flushing all the sediment out of your system. But that's all I got for today, man. It was, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that this thing is going to work out better now. And, uh, I've never had any concerns with this truck overheating until recently, like since December. But now I don't think I have to worry about it anymore. I got other things to worry about. So if you like this video, please smash the like button and share it with your vast social media network. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please click the, little, the bell icon right next to the sub button. That way YouTube will let you know the next time I upload a video. And if you'd like to support this channel, there's links in the description to Amazon, PayPal, and uh, Patreon. Consider using one of those links. And until next time, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep your powder dry, and have a splendid day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You didn't think I was going to come all the way up here and not shoot. <laughs> come on.